Well, so REACH to begin with is really a study of youth mental health and what we want to do is to find out how mental health problems developed over time. And we wanted to do that by constructing a cohort of young people aged 11 to 14 who we could then follow over a couple of years, recruited from schools in South London. And what's happened with the study is that there's been the development of a huge public engagement component to it. And it's part of that that has led us here to the Royal Society to exhibit at their Summer Science Festival. REACH stands for Resilience, Ethnicity and Adolescent Mental Health. And as part of the study we're going into 12 schools in South East London and assessing around 4,000 secondary school students. We know that 50% of mental health problems start during adolescence. So it's a great opportunity to, to intervene. We go in assessing the whole year groups, year seven, year eight and year nine. Paper was not just engaging enough, so we bring the tech in and we do it with tablets. We're asking about behavioural side of things, about how they're feeling, their emotions, um, their kind of support network, coping mechanisms that they might use. And then we go to one-to-one uh, -one interviews. So we ask them a more in-depth questions about their mental health, but also about their experience, if they had difficult or harmful experiences in their lives. About three young people in every classroom will have a, a, a mental health problem and it's becoming, it seems to be becoming more and more prevalent so we really need to try and find um, ways of intervening and preventing um, anything from developing further. There are definitely some students who, who will slip through the net, perhaps the quieter ones who, who might not be used to, to sharing this kind of information with teachers and something that I think is a really great thing that we can do with the study is help flag students who perhaps aren't doing so well. What we hope to find out is essentially what makes people resilient. Why do some people do well and some people struggle? And then longer term, what we hope is that we can use the relationships that we've built with schools in order to be able to then take the next step and develop interventions which might prevent or stop the development of mental health problems over time. So which of these is most correct? Everyone is a little bit OCD. Who thinks that's right? So the public engagement was really born out of the fact that we realised we needed to give something yeah. back in order to get the data. So I think where we started was really by asking the question, what is it that schools want? What is it that young people want? Um, and how can we ensure that what we're doing is not just an academic exercise but does have impact? So we developed mental health awareness sessions for their teachers and talk to and work with the young people to get them uh, opportunities to see what university is like. And from that we've arranged visits to King's, um, in particular to Denmark Hill campus, uh, tours of our brain bank and genetics labs to really inspire young people. The Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition is one of the most prestigious uh, science exhibitions there is in the UK. Most cutting edge uh, research that's being conducted right now. They were calling like for everyone to apply. So together with Charlotte Gay Anderson, we decided to do it together on the topic of technology and mental health. That was in October, and one day before I went on annual leave in December, we got the results that we were accepted, and we couldn't believe it. I mean, it is a very prestigious event, and, and I feel so fortunate to have been accepted to present, um, being the first time that mental health has been sort of the, the main aspect of an exhibit, and the first time that the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience has been um, has exhibited there. It will be um, a great opportunity to, to spread awareness of mental health in general to those young people. All the projects involved in our exhibit, they are very cutting edge research. By far the most popular component is the virtual reality uh, testings. What the people who come to the exhibit can do is they can put on the headsets, they can enter the virtual reality uh, environment which is a school canteen, and, and they can experience what it's like to participate in research. And we also have uh, some tablet computers which have the cognitive tests and tasks that we use when we do assessments with young people in schools. And then moving further along we've got uh, screens which have videos. They include the use of avatar therapy, which is a very innovative, highly novel therapy. And also we have at the far end of the exhibit a new method for tracking rumours about mental health through social media. And that's important because it becomes possible then to counteract some of these rumours and through that stop the spread of stigma around mental health. 
it's important for us to um, to share the message of mental health, that mental health should be seen just as physical health is. It's all connected. This is a highlight for us because we're reaching so many people and what we hope will come from it is just a greater awareness of the study. Often public engagement, even still as part of research projects, is something of a kind of adjunct which is done partly to satisfy funders. But actually our experience is that public engagement massively increases the worth and value of the research that we're doing and also the quality of the science is improved through public engagement. I mean, the way you're invested in what you're researching, it kind of changes completely because it's not just numbers on a screen, it just comes to life and then all makes sense.